Hi. <laughs> You're tuned to the Let's Talk show. I'm your host, Stephanie Anthony. And on the phone line, I have host Evangelist Alicia Garth. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> it, it's so good to have you. Good to be with you guys uh, here on the WWW World Wide Web. <laughs> Uh, we look forward to touching on issues that you've been thinking about during the week. The Let's Talk program has been on the air since 2007. We're a production of Louisiana Democracy Project, a nonprofit social justice organization dedicated to the people and the best interests of the community at large. We host a number of activities, including the Let's Talk program. Evangelist Alicia Garth serves as our chaplain. Um, so she's a spiritual advisor that not only uh, is involved with um, our outreach uh, activities, including the Let's Talk program. So we welcome you and we welcome her uh, and we encourage you to like, share, and comment. Make sure that your comments are, you know, nice, appropriate uh, on the subject. Please no trollers. All right. Alicia, I you know, I was saying earlier, it is so cold. Yeah. <laughs> Here in the deep south, we're not used to it. We like to be in uh, shorts and flip-flops all the time. Uh, but it's January, and it is a, a chilly January. This morning, it was 27 degrees. <laughs> and uh it's been cold for the last few days. Uh, as I understand it, we're gonna have we're gonna get up to 47 and then we'll start dipping again. So I'm encouraging everyone to grease up and cover up. When I say grease up, you get out your if you like liquid oil, uh, and that could be mineral oil. It could be castor oil. It could be uh, olive oil or any, you know, combination of those. And I'm not talking about something that you spent an arm and a leg for, you know, uh, going into some specialty shops. You know, I'm not saying that you got to go get frankincense and myrrh, but get you some oil and oil your body. Start with your head. You know, all your face, your neck, all of it. <laughs> then after you've uh, oiled and make sure you get those elbows. After you have gotten all yourself oiled up, you put on some clothes, layer on clothes. And uh, Evangelist Garth, I heard you say that you know how to layer. I do. I do. You know what I do? And that's something you will... Uh... Be happy that you get when you get in the weather. Because like, as you were saying, Louisiana, you know, we, we have the same where my daddy did. Mm. And that's Louisiana weather. You just don't know. You don't know. I, you don't know how it's going to be. So he had a jacket and layers and, and, and boots and stuff. And, you know, he had it in, in the back. Yes, right. <laughs> so you could just go ahead and get it when you need it. But yeah, that line up, you'll be a prejudice that you did. That's right. And I want to tell uh, our younger uh, viewers and listeners that um, do not expect that you're going to, you know, have on uh, short shorts <laughs> and uh, uh, a wife beater and you're going to be comfortable. You want uh, everybody to have the thermostat turned up to 90 you know, so you can walk around half naked. No, it's wintertime. Cover yourself up. Get those bones and joints covered up so that you can be comfortable, you can think, and you can function. 
And uh, I'm going to say, you know, you start off with the um, sleeveless T-shirt, white beater, whatever you want to call it. And uh, then over that, you put a regular T-shirt with the short sleeves, cotton, if at all possible. And then to me, on top of that, you put you on a cotton long sleeve. Now, this stuff does not have to match, and it could be well-worn. You know, you uh, you don't have to worry about that because on top of that, you're going to put your cute outfit on the bottom part. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, you can have on uh, some older pajamas because I know a lot of people don't have uh, Long John's thermal underwear. Um that live in the deep south. They just don't have it. But uh, you can put yourself on some flannel night bottoms and uh, have your legs all covered up good. Let's say that you didn't have olive oil, uh, castor oil, or mineral oil. Vaseline will do the trick. <laughs> yeah. There's a uh, famous actress director that was that was on a commercial I saw the other day. She was talking about her grandmother and how she would say to her grandmother, "Ooh, your skin so uh, soft," and her grandmother would say, "Ain't nothing but Vaseline." But that Vaseline d d does the trick. It really does. It's not just uh, it's wonderful for babies' bottoms but it's also wonderful for any place on your body just about. And you massage that in, take a little time with it. You know, you deserve that. Smooth it out, you know, and let's say you didn't have any of that. You get it all on your elbows, on your knees, on your legs, on your thighs, on your ankles, on your calves, all of that, rub it in and get to those feet. Now, let's say you didn't have no Vaseline, uh, but for some reason or another, your family still buys Crisco. Scoop you a tablespoon of that up. Put it in some wax paper because you may not use it all. Rub it between your hands, the, uh, the part that you're going to use, and then lotion it in, grease it into your feet. Now, you might say, Sister Stephanie, why you can't just get some uh, lotion and put it on? Because it's cold. That's going to wear out. <laughs> Your skin going to suck that up in just a few minutes. I'm talking about stuff that's going to last you all day, especially if you got to go in and out. That your uh, skin will be even better tomorrow. And after you've done that, uh, you know, for as long as it's real cold, you're going to say, look at my skin. It looks so wonderful. While other people are itch itchy and scratching, they acting like, you know, uh, fleas have gotten on them because of the dry skin. You're going to be comfortable and your skin will be luxurious. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Cover up, ladies. <laughs> this is not the time to have your chest all out. Everybody's talking about, you know, they hear somebody cough, they hollering COVID. But I'm going to tell you, there's something else that it might be. Chest cold. Cover your chest up. You see, save the cleavage. Don't be out there where the wind can get to your tender parts. That's what my advice is for you uh, this uh, January. That's good advice. It's, it's good. I mean, it, you know, and it's things that, you, that we have at home. Yes. Like you said, we don't have to go out and, you know, spend all on things that doesn't work. Because like yeah. you said, it'll set your skin up. You know, you putting the lotion on, you turn around your feet, and your elbows back dry. <laughs> You know, yeah, and we said we're putting out the wrong message to our baby girls. 
You know, our daughters do not need to figure that they got to have $50 to go and get them something to have their skin feeling good. They don't. They can have very simple, pure ingredients. In fact, the purer, the better. Because some of that stuff, they mix it and stuff is not uh, any good for us. And so the purer you can have it, uh, the better. You're listening to Let's Talk. And one of the things that uh, I was very pleased about was that people were sending me links to the free rapid COVID-19 tests that the government is uh, going to be shipping out. Now, I had no idea. I was like, uh, somebody sent me the link. I went to the the site, filled it out. They said you could have, uh, I think, three kits uh, now. So I was, you know, in my mind saying, oh, yeah, who else I'm going to give a kit to? And so I was just thinking of all kinds of ways in order to get kits. And, um, you know, I uh, somebody told me that it's going to be two weeks or three. And so I didn't realize that. But I will tell you this. There are a lot of people that have been exposed to COVID-19 um, that may not tell you. I'll give you an example. Uh, I do a, a work with um, youth in my area. And one of uh, my youth volunteers, well, I asked her, she, you know, she came down and I'll tell you more about a uh, project I'm working on, but she came down, she asked if she could help. And I said, sure. And I asked her, why was she out of school? I said, school out? I didn't know school was out now. Well, I didn't know because some schools, and it may be the same in your area, are um, out because they can't social distance the way that uh, they should, and they're getting uh, COVID-19 Omicron uh, outbreaks. And so when it gets too high, you know, sometimes they just have the kids to work from home. Uh, in her case, she explained that um, she had, she was in a class that had people in it that had the virus. So she didn't, you know, she didn't have the virus, but she had been in close proximity. And she comes from a family with uh, a bunch of elementary schoolers. So she's 14. They, um, you know, sent her home to, uh, I think she can go back to school on Monday. <sighs> anyway, you know, um, I asked and she told, but, and I'm a high risk person, you know, so when she was saying this to me, she didn't have on no mask, you know, she 14, she didn't have on nothing. You know, yeah, she was standing right next to me. So, um, I, you know, want to say this, when, go on, although you might say, oh, I don't need uh, a test. Go on and get the test because if you need it, you'll have it. And um, in a case like with that young lady, if I had had them already, my three, I would have said, here's the test. Uh, let's see how it goes and you test, you know, let's, let's get you tested right now. Um, because sometimes, you know, everybody is not on the same level. Some will be, you know, uh, kind of lackadaisical. Maybe some of them are just very, very busy. And some of them, um, really don't uh, don't have the equipment, the things, the wherewithal. My point being, go on and send for the test. Uh, most recently, I went for a rapid test uh, and had to, you know, stand in line for a long amount of time, but I had been in the hospital with my uh, mother 
and uh, for 24 hours in the emergency room. They were bringing in and out people, you know, with COVID. And, uh, you know, the hospital was um, overflowing. You know, they didn't have no beds. It was it's so many people sick with COVID. So I didn't want to be in that number and I didn't want to be unaware and pass things on to other folks, you know. And so I'm encouraging you to go on for the rapid COVID test. And guess what else they got coming up free? What is it? The N95 mask. They okay. say next week, the CVS's, uh, Walgreens, and Walmarts will uh, be giving out three masks each in the battle of the uh, Omicron surge. So they have 400 million masks from the strategic national uh, stockpile. And the experts say that uh, we need to step up our protection uh, against the Omicron uh, variant. And of course, they are suggesting as a first line of defense, the N95 or the KN95 uh, mask. They uh, fit well and uh, they wear consistently. And um, they have some um, nice uh, things because uh, they they fit tighter on the face uh, than the cloth mask or the disposable blue mask that everybody likes so much. And they're made of a special material that's designed to block out 95% of harmful particles. And uh, the fibers are pressed closer together with an electrostatic charge that attracts molecules to stick to the mask rather than passing through the mask. So <clears throat> this is what I want to say also. Uh, some mask is better than no mask. Uh, even though they might say masks are optional or this or that, uh, when you look at uh, going into a store or going to a meeting or maybe even going to church, let me suggest to you that you keep on your mask. In fact, if it's the disposable blue ones, put two, two of them on. If you got the cloth cap, put the disposable one under the cloth one. You know, put on your, your uh, disposable mask and then put your fashion mask on, you know, the one that uh, is color coordinated with your outfit. <laughs> put that on on top of that, you know, and that'll bring it in closer, you know, and, uh, you know, you'll have more protection. Now, I think I showed the uh, N95 uh, mask before. Um, I'm, 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 but I want to show it again for our folk that's watching us with the video. So uh, this is a N95. And, um, you know, it's got the, it's, it usually has two of the like elastic uh, straps. And it's got this little part in here and a little foam that makes a tight seal on the inside. And on the outside, it's got the metal clasp where you can bend it to fit your nose. And, you know, some people are like, oh, I just can't stand a mask. I can't. Look, you can't stand being sick. Uh, so you stretch it over your head. And you see, even with uh, wearing a turban, I can get it over there. I can stretch it. It's a tight, tight fit. See my fat cheeks? Oh, and I push it right there to make sure that it leaves my nose a little room. And voila, you can still hear me. 
you know, uh, and we want to encourage people not to try to pull down their masks to talk uh, in a crowded place. And it's so funny, evangelist. You know, you can ask somebody a question and they'll pull their mask off to hear you. I can't understand that. Why do people do that, evangelist? Tell me. Well, <laughs> how? I guess he's not thinking that you know, uh, the mask, as you pull it down, you know, your throat is sensitive to it as well. <laughs> well, look, and this is. If they can't hear you, it's not like they're cleaning their ears out to hear you better. They pulling their mask off like that's going to help them hear better. You know? <laughs> You're not pulling your mask off. They're pulling their mask off. People do the funniest things. <laughs> you know, they really do. But anyway, we want to encourage you to stay safe. And just because you have a mask don't mean that you don't have to wash your hands still. Keep washing your hands. Keep uh, sanitizing. You know, if you, uh, now I like the buildings that I go to that you uh, put your hand under and the motion, the um, sanitizer comes out in your hand. I love that. I love that because you're not touching anything, but you're getting the, you know, the sanitizer on your hands, rub it in real well, keep rubbing, keep rubbing, keep rubbing. Uh, and don't wipe it on your clothes. <laughs> you know, some people, they get a handful of sanitizer and they have wiped their hands and then wipe the rest on their clothes. No, no, no. Uh, so we want to, uh, you know, make sure that you're aware of those things. You're listening to Let's Talk. I'm your host, Stephanie Anthony, coming to you live from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. We like to simulcast with www.247praiseradio.com. Uh, that's the internet radio station. And its uh, founder is Reverend Ivory D. Payne. Uh, we want to send a shout out to the 247praiseradio.com family. Encourage you to uh, download the app and you'll have wonderful gospel music to listen to uh, for your listening enjoyment. We've been coming to uh, on live on the air since 2007 during uh, Hurricane Gustav was when uh, we formed the Let's Talk program. And so we look forward to um, continuing that tradition as we go forth in 2022. Who would have thought? that we would have made it to 2022. When I uh, was watching TV the other day and they were talking about, it has been one year since uh, President Joe Biden has been in office. Looked like to me he'd been in there about 50 years. <laughs> so much has happened since. <laughs> you know, I am just shocked. And all the stuff has, that has gone down. And uh, the same thing with uh, our mayor here in Baton Rouge. You know, when she took office, the uh, before you could blink good, we had a, um, a serial sniper, you know, come through Baton Rouge and uh, kill up some policemen. Uh, and... Uh, let me say that uh, the murder rate uh, in Baton Rouge during COVID, uh, it was already climbing, but it has really been uh, out the roof, over the roof. Uh, anger is at an all-time high. And uh, we just want to encourage people to uh, not blame others for whatever 
is going on in your life that you don't like. And um, we encourage you, uh, no matter how bad the situation looks, that the solution uh, is not down the barrel of a gun. And you, I would love for you to speak on that just a minute, if you like, uh, Evangelist. Okay. Yes, I would. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, the, it, it really is just terrible with the gun violence, especially with the law being passed about you know, people carrying the guns. And, and it seems like, even with that, it seems like everybody is a militant. You know, it's 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 really bad. Mm -hmm. You know, right across where I live here in Baton Rouge, uh, in Allison, Louisiana, um, even when they were like popping the firecrackers for bringing in the new year, you could almost be able to tell the gunfire, mm -hmm. and it, it was terrible. Look, I got to make you laugh. It wasn't funny, but it was very poignant. I went to a meeting. Uh, with the, you know, it was a, pleading, a meeting with the police chief and uh, community meeting. And the people were talking about uh, there was so much of shooting real guns into the air. And, you know, those bullets come back down. A lady was explaining that her roof was riddled with uh, shots from guns and it was her roof was leaking from the number of bullet holes that were in her roof from people shooting off their guns. Now that's scary. Evangelist? I'm here. It is, it is, you know, because I mean you couldn't even enjoy yourself. <laughs> A lot of it was, I guess you could call it pretty, the, the, you know, when it was the firecracker that was, or the, uh, sparkles or whatever, but, oh, oh God. Well, oh, you God. know, sparkles are good. Firecrackers are against the law. <laughs> you know, they, they have a downtown, uh, you know, light show and uh, fireworks show. Because uh, at one point, our town had so many fires and accidents, you know, from um, fireworks that they do a city fireworks. Uh, sometimes they didn't because of COVID. Oh, yeah, right, right. You know, uh, everybody they thought was going to stay inside and watch the fireworks and the stuff on TV from, you know, from the different celebrations. Now, downtown, uh, they still had the uh, the red stick. And for those of you who are uh, not from this area, Baton Rouge uh, means red stick. Uh, it was the way that the uh, frontiersman was described this area. Uh, that was uh, inhabited by Native, Native American tribes and to divide off where uh, their uh, hunting grounds were. They had uh, a shaft, a stick that um, was red because of the uh, hunting material that they had uh, on that stick designating that this was their hunting grounds. And so uh, this became known as Baton Rouge Red Stick. And some years ago, uh, like uh, New York City has the dropping of the ball, uh, Baton Rouge has the lighting of the Red Stick <laughs> downtown. <laughs> we have a little area. And uh, it's the same area where they have the the big Christmas tree, which is the city Christmas tree they put up every year. And uh, they do the lighting of the Christmas tree um, right around Thanksgiving, actually. Uh, then um, sometimes 
they have the Christmas parade that goes in that area. And so the red stick, um, the lighting of the red stick is, um, you know, supposed to be our, <clears throat> you know, thing that they do not do um, necessarily. I mean, they always do for New Year's, but not necessarily uh, any fireworks that go along with it. Now, we have another tradition, uh, which is uh, the lighting of the bonfires, which happens around Christmas. And uh, up and down the Mississippi River, people make uh, wooden structures that will be lit on Christmas Eve. And um, they say to light the way for Papa Noel uh, to find uh, the town where there's a town with children uh, that want gifts. So, uh, and then for the 4th of July, which is the big time for the fireworks here, they have um, a barge which is in the middle of the Mississippi and they shoot off all the fireworks from the barge. So, you know, any, any leftovers fall into the river, you know, it's not uh, in people's backyards starting fires and uh, it's supposed to be, you know, a nice community gathering. So that's how we do it here in the big BR. <laughs> You're listening to Let's Talk. If you'd like to get in on the conversation, uh, just be sure to uh, share, like, and subscribe. We also invite you to uh, download the www.247. Those are numbers. Uh, PraiseRadio.com. That's 24-7 PraiseRadio.com app. You can find it in your favorite app store. Um, you know, it, it. we're into a new year, but there are still uh, deaths going on that uh, surprise us. Uh, well, you know, everyone was uh, surprised when Betty White died. Yeah. Um, at age uh, 99 and just when she would have made her 100th birthday, uh, they release, uh, one of her workers released a picture of her looking all sweet in green. And uh, they said that so many people donated to animal causes, which was one of her, um, you know, things, beloved things that she worked for. In fact, she, when people would ask her when she would retire, she kept saying that she had to uh, keep working in order to uh, support uh, the animal projects that she had going. And I can really relate to that, that you, uh, you know, can't just sit down. You got to keep doing stuff. Uh, for the causes that mean most to you. And then uh, there was Bob Saget, who a comedian uh, who's best known for Full House. Uh, he died in January as well. And uh, he his cause uh, was a disease that his sister had uh, passed away with early in life and um, which in time, you know, he uh, became stricken with and, and then, of course, he uh, died and now people are really, is, um, you know, turning attention to uh, a condition that folks wouldn't have ordinarily been aware of. Then, of course, most recently, Louis Anderson, the comedian that's known for being kind of portly. He uh, uh, has a lot of jokes. He's a stand-up comedian about his weight. Um, but people really remember him 
uh, as the guy on the fries in Coming to America. And um, they say that he was uh, 68 years old. And I did not realize uh, that at all. I thought, I, I just assumed he was older. But um, so he's, uh, his work is done now uh, here on um, Earth. And he, you know, they say that laughter is like a medicine. And even with his cartoons, uh, he had a cartoon show as well. I always uh, thought that his dragon, you know, deadpan kind of way was very, very humorous. And so uh, I'm very grateful for the laughter that he brought into my life. Now, um, individually, and I, I know, Evangelist, this has probably been the same in your life. Uh, most recently, we've had a lot of people in our own lives uh, to die. And what I'm finding out more and more is that folks are not, um, they are not posting in the, the obituaries in the newspaper like they used to. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can hear that a person has passed away and start looking in the paper and don't see anything or you don't see it until the day of the funeral. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to encourage everyone out there with a... Uh, where there's a black press or where there is a uh, community newspaper that you write those obituaries and send it in to that local paper. Because uh, many times this is how uh, things are documented. I'll give you an example and tell you a story at the same time. Um, have for many years done an activity uh, with Louisiana Democracy Project and even before it in uh, called Community Kids Outreach. And one of the volunteers that I had um, some years back, and I'll, I'll tell you a lot about her over the weeks to come, Aura Hutchinson is donating her house, a, a, a house that she had, here in Baton Rouge for us to turn into a center. We have agreed that this center will be named for her aunt, Idella Burton Ter Terrell. And uh, Idella Terrell was an usher at, it was her aunt, but at the same time an usher at Little Rising Sun Baptist Church. That's uh, you know, the church that I moved my membership to as a young woman with a baby in arms, and that baby is now 34 years old. Uh, and, uh, you know, a little crop of children, stair steps. Um, I moved to South Baton Rouge, and uh, I moved my membership from True Light Baptist Church, where Set Reverend C.A. Forrest was pastor to Little Rising Sun Baptist Church, which was in South Baton Rouge, and Elder C.A. Forrest was uh, the pastor, just in a different part of town. And she was an usher. The ushers of that church, when I walked through the door with all those little children, they took, it was a 5 p.m. service. They took my children and had them, you know, on the ushers' rows with them. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, they let them fan with the fans. And, you know, they sent me up in, you know, to the middle of the church on the opposite side. And it was the first time I could actually breathe, open up the scriptures, you know, and uh, really enjoy the service. 
when they brought my children back, I was like, oh no, take them up for the rest of the service. But they bring they brought me my children uh just uh I guess it was just just after no just before communion. Yeah. So um Idelatero uh was not only an usher there at uh Little Rising Sun, but she belonged to Little Rising Sun uh Benevolent Society, which I later joined. And um she was just a very, very nice lady, very nice to me. Well, she had raised Or and her two sisters because they were orphaned uh, as young girls. And uh, years later, and I do mean years later, after I had moved to South Baton Rouge and, you know, um, I was in public housing. And so was Aura. Aura um, came to me. It was very, it had some very questionable uh, living situations. Aura came to me and she said, um, you see all of this going on around here? She said, uh, they say you can write. And she said, I can talk. We're going to go and get this situation straight. So this was my introduction to uh, tenant rights. And I met Annie Smart, and I met, um, who was a welfare rights advocate. I met uh, Clara Mae Wells, who was a school board watcher. Uh, Eva Lagarde, uh, who, you know, was also involved in trying to get uh, uh, educational enrichment for kids in South Baton Rouge. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And um, so um, my time in South Baton Rouge was very, very good. Uh, eventually, uh, also, I, I met um, Murphy Bell, thanks to Aura. She said, we're going to get a lawyer and we're going to sue these folks. <laughs> I look, I was writing, I was taking pictures, you know, I was I was on it once she put a fire under me. But before she put a fire under me, I was uh I was still burned out from the Southern University uh killing of Denver Smith and Leonard Brown. So I you know, I wasn't I wasn't Look, I wasn't moving forward uh, with com community issues at all. But Aura came and put a fire under me, and then she left and went to uh, California. I was left to fight the battle and uh, pursue the lawsuit, and we lost. But our lawsuit got the uh, attention of the federal government. Oh, and um, they opened up an investigation and 85% of the East Baton Rouge Parish Housing Authority went to jail for uh, stealing money and um, corruption and malfeasance in office. <clears throat> well, whew, here it is in uh, 2022. And uh, she had uh, inherited a piece of property from her aunt, Idella Terrell. And that's what we are um, uh, endeavoring to turn into a center, a community center. Yeah. And, and um, we're going to name, um, you know, some of the rooms. One will, of course, the building, of course, we'll call the Idella Terrell Center. Maybe we'll call it Idella B. Terrell <laughs> for Burton uh, Center. And uh, then we'll <clears throat> name one of the ro rooms for uh, Attorney Murphy Bell. Uh, he was a civil rights attorney, and of course, he was our representative in that tenant lawsuit. 
class action lawsuit. Uh-huh. Uh We'll also, of course, um, name a room for Annie Smart and Clara May Wells. Wow. So um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm asking everyone's prayers so that we're in the building needs a lot of work. The building was built back in the 40s. It's built with shiplap and, um, you know, it's got a lot of issues, you know, um, and we're going to really need volunteers, supplies and equipment. And one of the first things I'd like to do is have a diaper drive. Um, Annie Smart, and I want to have that uh, kind of uh, to supply uh oh, I still got you, Evangelist. I'm still here. All right. I really like to um, supply the Annie Smart room with um, diapers, baby diapers. Yes. And you might say, well, Stephanie, why would you want to do that? Yes. Well, there's something that you may not know about. And it's smart. Long before she became a welfare rights activist, yeah. she was in Jet Magazine. Uh huh. And she was in Jet Magazine uh, as um, an incredible mother. And I want to get this right. So I'm going in my old, I'm looking in my old. Um, book that, uh, that I have saved some clippings uh, that I did back in 1983. And I, this is kind of impromptu. I hadn't planned to pull this out, but I, I want to I want to get this right about Annie Smart. Uh, the lead story had to do with uh, Rupert Richardson, who, who was the president of the state NAACP uh, at the time. But I did a story on 10 women who helped to shape Baton Rouge. And Annie yeah. Smart was one of the 10 that I interviewed at that time. And... Uh, uh, if you don't mind, Evangelist, let me read this to you. Okay, I don't mind. All right. Uh, Annie Smart. Robust and quick to laugh, Annie Smart is the city's leading spokeswoman for welfare rights. Quote, I found myself on welfare at one time, and I knew that I should know something about the program. I began to think and to learn. I was very edu it was very educational. Before long, I was helping others while helping myself, she said. She and seven other women became the seeds of what turned out to be a welfare rights organization. Among them, they had between 40 to 60 children. There was a lot of life, that was a lot of lives to look after. Later, she ran for the United States Senate against Russell Long. We didn't win the election, but we did win some respect. He called us bums and things like that. But we had 55,000 votes, she recalls. I learned about welfare politics and the federal government and federal regulations. I developed a real case of nosiness and when, and now I've gone too far to turn around. Ms. Smart has been involved in many facets of civil rights, human rights, reapportionment and politics. If you can name it, I can claim it, she chuckled. Ms. Smart has been honored by the Student Government Association of Southern University. She was Zeta Phi Beta's 1974 Woman of the Year. 
She had been recognized for outstanding achievement by Omega Psi Phi Alpha, Peoples Against Poverty, the Baton Rouge Const Constituency, uh, number 179, Annie Smart received the National Service Award and the National Legal Aid Defender Association in Boston for her work on behalf of legal services and her untiring dedication to helping poor people over the last 20 years. She was a delegate to the White House Conference on Aging and served on the Board of Directors of Capital Area Legal Services. She is the founder and chairwoman of the Louisiana Hunger Coalition and the director of Peoples for Survival Coalition. Miss Smart is the mother of 13 children and has 28 grandchildren. I'm gonna stop it there because that's why I'd like to have the diaper campaign any smart diaper campaign where people can donate diapers. Let's say, for example, uh, you had uh, a baby shower and people gave you lots of uh, newborn baby uh, diapers and then uh, your baby grew out of those in a month. You know, well, uh, you'll be able to donate those diapers to uh, the Any Smart uh, uh, diaper campaign <clears throat> and uh, they can have new life rather than just taking up room and not being used in some closet somewhere. So we're going to look forward to uh, doing that diaper campaign and that'll be our first uh, activity that we reach out for with the Idella Terrell Center. I right on. <laughs> so, and look, what people really don't realize is that in those 13 children, she had um, uh, two sets of twins. Wait, she had, I want to say three sets of twins and two sets of triplets. But, you know, she, and that's why she was in Jet Magazine. <laughs> But, you know, I imagine, you know, I was, I had four kids. I couldn't barely, you know, uh, screw my head on straight. And she had all them children and was uh, doing community work at the same time. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine? So, uh, you know, it's just... Oh my God! <laughs> What's discovering, you know, just listening to everything that you read about, and even the beginning, uh, how passionate she was with what things that she were doing. It just warms my heart, you know, because you know, even with our um, made a make. What's the, what's the yeah. last name, Mayda? McDonald, yeah. You know, all of the people that she did, that she talks about as well, what you talk about, it's so much history right here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Oh, yeah. And I want to be able to come and just play a part in it. It was just painting or putting up something for a step or something, because you know what? Mm. That does not need to stop. Amen. Our kids need to know that we have, you know, we can read about people from all over the world that has made big contributions, but even right here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, mm -hmm. we have so many, it's so many that I hear every Saturday when we're on the air, there's so many, mm -hmm. and there's so many that are still doing things, mm -hmm. you know, contributing, you know, and that's just awesome, you know, and also, even to know that, even to know the labor you put in. I know sometimes, you know, you may think that you're alone because you do so much and a person would not really know everything that you do with such a passion. Well, you know, it's just, it, it, it's just what I do, it pales to somebody got 13 children. They, I don't know how she got herself her teeth brushed and some clothes on to get out the house. 13 children. <laughs> Now that that was real woman. 
Those, those be some real women. You know that, uh, you know, we, that you got to remember this was before TV dinners. This was before microwaves. You know, it wasn't no conveniences. You know, uh, that like we know them today. They they were considering that, um, you know, that a washing machine, you know, was a real uh, convenience, a real luxury. You know, and I can remember these women, they got a, a electric washing machine, but they didn't have no dryer. Still had to hang the clothes out on the line. Imagine uh, hanging up clothes for 13 kids. <laughs> Can you imagine that? And so I pale in comparison to, you know, what real women back in the day, uh, and when I'm saying back in the day, this is 1983. I was a young whippersnapper then, but uh, I, I look forward to trying to do something that increases knowing the legacy of uh, some women that have gone on before us who have really uh, made sacrifices for our community. And I'm going to encourage those uh, kids that are, especially local kids that may be doing reports on um, people that have made great contributions in the uh, yes. community and they don't they didn't all have you know a lot of uh you know college education or this and that but they use their gifts in order to uh you know make their community a better place amen amen you know, you know, even as you're saying what you're saying, I'm thinking about uh, when we need a gun, gun allowance. About the gun, we used to, we used to do that mm -hmm. with the gun violence. Yes. I'm thinking about her and how, what, is that, what was that, her daughter, they, 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 when we had the show and she was already deceased. Oh, you're thinking about, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. My God. You know, and the passion that they all had, yeah. you know, the passion, you know, uh, Gun, I love uh, you. you know, Jim Colbert is, you know, with the TV station that he had yeah. way back then, so we had internet TV and yeah. radio, he had that. Yeah. Remember? I do. I do well. Mm -hmm. I do well. And, uh, you know, sometimes, I'm going to say this, uh, sometimes uh, people become, um, uh, less active because of age or health and um folk quickly forget you know they how much they have uh, they did uh to help the quality of life uh for um folks in the community yes. and um you know it's kind of it's kind of uh we want to we want to bring that uh, back to the forefront, mm -hmm. so that uh, their memory is not forgotten. You've been listening to Let's Talk. It has been uh, an amazing time with you. We ask that you subscribe, like, and comment. We look forward to uh, being with you next week, same time, same station with uh, me, Stephanie Anthony, that cheerleader for Jesus, and none other than evangelist Alicia Garth for another edition of Let's Talk. And oh, yes, next week we're going to have with us uh, our very own Maida McDonald, and she'll be bringing on a guest to talk about uh, step dancing. <laughs> and we'll find out more uh, about uh, that wonderful activity that is not only brings joy, but uh, brings a good exercise to individuals, young and old. Until next time, this is Stephanie and...
Evangelist, I hope she's still with us so that she can give you her own signature sign off. Yeah, from- I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> my mind, I'm thinking about these, these awesome, you know, the legacies that you uh, talked about. And I'm thinking about it. And I'm thinking about ways to enhance it as well. But I'll be with you next week. And this is Evangelist God sounding out. Missing you all. Love you so much. Meet you in the place next week. Amen. Bye bye. Bye-bye. God is good.